Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. In a few short hours, we will all have our hot little hands on Google Chrome, Google's first web browser, and uh, just recorded a, a few of my thoughts on why I think Google Chrome is going to be a game changer. But I wanted to get into five specific reasons why I believe this may very well be your new default web browser. I mean, forget about the fact that you're probably using Google uh, for your uh, search engine anyway. You might even be using Gmail. Uh, you may be a Google Docs addict. Uh, you, you know Google, okay? They're not going away anytime soon. Uh, I also noted in the other video uh, introduction the comic that was released outlining why uh, this is going to be an amazing departure from what you've been used to with uh, respect to what a web browser is or what it can do for you. This isn't just another web browser. One of the reasons, the first reason, why I believe uh, Google Chrome is going to be a great web browser, uh, not just for power users, but specifically for just regular old users, anybody, is that Google is focused, number one, on user experience. Now, the user experience is, you know, being a, a browser that just lets you do what you want to do, and that is browse the web. And unfortunately, uh, many web browsers uh, don't necessarily think about the user first. Uh, now, granted, Google is going to have their brands stamped on uh, Google Chrome. I mean, it is their web browser, but um, you probably already have Google sitting inside your web browser right now, whether it's the uh, Google toolbar or whether it's a search box with the word Google in it. It's kind of already there. But Google has already documented uh, in a very extensive fashion, at least in the comic, how they are showing and illustrating that they are focused on the user, the user experience. It's all about the user experience. Uh, in, in basic documentation, uh, like a new tab page, when you know, open up a new tab in your browser, inside of Google Chrome, it will show you uh, the most recent visited pages or tabs or the tabs or web pages that you most frequent because the chances of you wanting to go to one of those places is pretty high. So they've made the new tab page very user friendly, potentially predicting where it is you're going to want to go. I mean, it's just, that's something small, but it shows that they're thinking about the user. Right? I mean, you gotta like that. The second reason why I believe uh, that this is a, a good thing uh, for the industry and, and why you may like it and why other people are gonna like it is that it's open source. So you could take the code, if you wanted to, in theory, build your own browser uh, with the same code, make it better than what Google has done. Make it your own. You could do your own. Uh, they make it possible. But the fact that it's open source is very, very, very telling. Uh, and on one page of the comic, they said, so we've done all this work with Google Chrome, uh, optimized the, uh, you know, the experience for the user and whatnot, and we could lock it away, we can make it proprietary, but that's not really in our best interest. Uh, Google, as you very well know, is pretty much you know, an internet-based company. I mean, it is, as far as most people are concerned, like my parents, it is the internet. It's the way people discover the internet. So they're making it open source because they're trying to make the web better for everybody and certainly they're to be applauded that i think is the hugest smack in the face that google will have ever delivered to microsoft face it microsoft internet explorer not open source firefox mozilla open source opera not open source so uh you know why is that important to you well I've already stated several times that the future of software is open. The future of the web is most certainly open. So if software is not open source now, uh, it's just inevitable that it will be at some point. It's just it's going to happen. Google is you know falling in line with the future by making this open source. I mean this isn't the first time. You can go to code.google.com and you can download other projects uh, developed by Google engineers that are completely open source. It's, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, the open web is the only way to go. It's the only way we're going to make this a better world for everybody is if we share our knowledge. I mean, keeping things locked in, not cool. I, I, I just, proprietary and the web freaks me out. Just freaks me out. Open makes me happy. 
The third reason why I believe Google Chrome is going to be your browser of choice, potentially, is speed. Uh, we know, uh, as I shared in the other video, or you might have looked into the documentation, Google has based Chrome on top of WebKit, which is optimized for speed and is only going to get faster over time. But Google has also developed a JavaScript, uh, well, I, I guess you could say um, engine. I'm, I'm trying to keep it in, 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 uh, in real terms as much as possible here. Let's see here. How would Ponzi explain it? Okay. So right now when JavaScript executes, it ex executes one part at a time. Well, when it does that, it, your web browser may freeze. Your entire web browser may freeze because they get hung up on one part of it. Well, with Chrome, the way they've built the way uh, JavaScript is executed is it's done in a way that each thing can happen almost at the same time. And each particular tab executes things differently. So if you have one web page that's open in the foreground or the background that's freezing in, in, in some capacity, it doesn't take down the entire web browser. Each tab is run as a separate process. It's all about speed. It's all about efficiency. Now tell me, how many times have you had like 15 tabs open in your web browser and one of them froze? Sucks, doesn't it? Google Chrome is going to fix that for you, and it's going to happen right at version 1.0. So it's only going to get better. It's going to force the other browser makers, that would be Microsoft, we'll see how fast they move, uh, Firefox and, and or Mozilla, uh, certainly Opera, and then vicariously, potentially, WebKit and uh, Safari, although Safari 4.0 is still an alpha for developers right now. We'll see what Apple does with its next version of its official web browser. They're kind of already going the same direction, and I know there's been rumblings of Firefox 3.1 being optimized for JavaScript as well. Unfortunately, IE, Internet Explorer 8, I uh, hate to tell you, uh, even Microsoft has already openly admitted that JavaScript performance is going to kind of suck. So if you're looking forward to Internet Explorer 8, uh, it's not going to be in the speed department. If you want a fast web browser, you're going to have to switch. I don't know what else to tell you, and I'm saying Google Chrome could very well be it. It's all about speed, baby. It's all about speed. Number four, uh, I noted that it was cross-platform already, but I'm sorry. I noticed that it, I noted that it was open source. What I didn't note was that it's going to be cross-platform. Kind of goes without saying, but the first version is going to be released uh, for Windows. But it, they they haven't really stated a date on when it's going to be available for Mac OS X or Linux. But since it's open source anyway, you could likely compile it on your own if you have that ability or you know how to do that kind of thing. Uh, or you know you could wait for the official binary to be released. Um, It'll be interesting to see what happens. I've had two different people ask me, well, what do you think this is going to do with Google's relationship uh, with Firefox? And I'm not sure if it's going to change all that much. I mean, Google has been very supportive of Firefox, but I think largely because they've been trying to dent uh, the uh, market share of Internet Explorer. Has that happened? Has Google helped? Oh, I'm sure they've helped somewhat. I mean, certainly m Google makes a lot of money from uh, Firefox and, and vice versa because of the ads that are run in searches inside that web browser or through that web browser. So they have no reason to sever ties with Firefox. And hey, if WebKit's open source, if Google Chrome is open source, and Firefox and Mozilla are open source, if all this stuff is open source, where's the competition? It's, it's all open. So I don't even think uh, the world knows how to deal with that. I mean, how can you consider two open source projects completely open uh, to be competition? How does that work? Seriously, how does that work? Think about it. I'd be interested to know your answer in that specifically. Uh, number five, and Google has thought very hard about this, uh, and that is security. This is another big reason why I think you will be switching, or potentially switching, or switching your family and, and friends over to Google Chrome as a default browser. Uh, they've thought about the security model. All the way down to um, stopping any kind of phishing attacks from happening inside the browser. They're trying to reduce the time it takes from the user uh, clicking on a malicious or potentially malicious website related to phishing. Uh, they're trying to get it as close to zero as humanly possible. So it's constantly going to be uh, updating with the latest uh, phishing information. And that uh, a phishing uh, scam, we've covered this before, but just to, to recap for those who may not be uh, aware, is basically you get an email that says, hey, you need to change your password to your bank account because 
uh, we need to verify it. If you click that link, it may not go to the official website. It may go to a website that asks you for username and passwords, and it may not be the official website. They could then take that information and use it to get to your official uh, inf your official account on, on, on the real website. This type of phishing, they're phishing for information, P-H-I-S-H, let me P H I S H. Did I say? Did I spell that right? It's a little late at night right now. You have to pardon me. Um, these scams are are you know happening all the time, and the problem is that it takes about a full day for a phishing scam to be detected and then taken offline. Google's trying to release that time or reduce that time as close to uh, zero as as much as possible, and uh, they've architected uh, certain features inside the web browser to make that uh, a possibility. They've also built in uh, a, a feature that's been available at least inside of Safari that I know of, and I know Internet Explorer 8 will also have this feature, private browsing. Um, this is uh, something that is going to be important, I think, uh, for web surfers. Uh, you know, as we continue to roll forward with surfing the web, certainly your privacy is, is tied very much into security, especially if you are in a, a public uh, terminal or at a public terminal uh, using the web. If you want to make sure that nothing is being stored, you definitely want to enter in some kind of private mode, and, and the uh, Google Chrome browser will have that built in right out of the box, so it's, it's good to see they've thought about that, as well as a, a couple other features related to security and how plugins execute and how uh, the data on your hard drive stays that way and the data in your web browser stays that way. Uh, the comic that Google has released that I mentioned in another video uh, kind of explains it all. It, the best readme file that I've ever read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Best comic I've read in a long time. Uh, can't believe I, I admitted that. In the old way, uh, those are the five uh, reasons why I think uh, you need to be paying attention to Google Chrome, even if you don't believe you're ready to switch your default web browser. Give it a shot. It's it's certainly worth trying. And hey, it's uh, what do you you can da download it. If you don't like it, you you can delete it. I think you got plenty of hard drive space. You might as well leave it around. You never know uh, when you might want to try it. You never really know what you're missing until you know what you're missing. Maybe you're afraid to try it. I don't know. My email address again, chris at perillo.com. Uh, you're also welcome to stop by the website. Uh, we've got this chat room open pretty much all the time. We're typically talking tech. I've got this live video feed going out over the net. Even you know this late at night, I'm still staying up and, and talking uh, software with uh, a whole bunch of geeks. I don't have much of a life. I get excited over web browsers. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to stop by and you're going to say hello. We're live 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.